thoughts on Hoffy Hour represent Brian Hoffy and Fastest. Listener discretion is advised. Live from Tampa Bay, you are tuned in to Hoppy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour. Hoppy Hour starts in four, three, two. Hoppy, Hoppy, Hoppy. This is Hoppy Hour with Hoppy and Alessia. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. That's a big water bottle you have there, Alessia. I know this is a visual, but my God, is that a big water bottle? <laughs> I think your hands are so small that it appears bigger because the water bottle, when you were holding it, looked bigger. Really? But when you put it down, it wasn't as big. Yeah. I'm in a very bizarre mood. I had uh, my shrink this morning. I like to call him my shrink. He's a psychologist, he's a th- therapist. How, how did it go? So many emotions were poured out that I'm just done. I'm just out of energy. So I was thinking about it. I was like, we've done about 10 shows. And I was thinking every show, it's like, oh, life sucks. Life sucks. That's us off air for like two minutes before we go on and do this. So we're doing this first thing. This is my first time speaking to you all day. I I, I mean, I texted you, right. but I want to have our first conversation be when you roll on in. I love it. Okay, so... Normally we start our, you know, we start our conversations like that. We're like uh, complaining, right? Yeah, yeah. But new year, new us. Um, we are not new complaining year. Anymore. It's just about February. New <laughs> month, new us. New month, new us. Exactly. Yeah. No, I woke up this morning. I didn't sleep a lot last night, but that's okay. Yeah. I woke up this morning and I had my kids with me, and I said, who's going to have a good day? And they raised their hand, and I raised my hand, and we set the intention to have, <laughs> yes, <laughs> to have a good day. And so, honestly, it's good, but I am curious about your shrink. Can I ask you some questions? Sure. Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to ask them anyways. Um, okay. When you go, yeah. does your therapist prompt questions to, like, get you to start, or do you, are you just... You're a communicator naturally. Do you naturally just I go babble into a lot. It? He has to interrupt me. He's 31 years old. So here's how I found him. Wow. In the past, because I'm a little crazy, I take Clonopin for my uh, bipolar. So I had to see a psychiatrist and a psychologist as a part of my old insurance. So I saw this woman for about four years. Uh, my longest relationship from 2015 to 2019, 2020. And then we, uh, just, uh, she retired, so I quit seeing her. So here's what happened. I didn't see a shrink for about two years. We're just hanging out. And then I went, I want to see a shrink. So I went to psychologytoday.com where you could pick one. And in the past, I've had these boomers that were out of touch, like all boomers that just didn't get it, like all boomers. So I said to myself, let me look for somebody that I'd want to hang out with and that I would be overserved at the bar, spilling my life and everything too. You know what I mean? You, you know when you get like- you know when you get really drunk at the bar and the next morning you think about it and you told some random person your whole life and all your problems? Yeah, that's my uh, shrink and I. Because I saw he's like 31 years old and I'm like, that's the vibe I'm going for. I love that. So do you feel, first of all, how long have you been seeing this specific person? Uh, About 15 months. Wow, this is a long relationship. Yeah. And so it must be going well. It's it's great. I kind of want to meet him, but I feel like it would, because his voice is very chill. Is it? Yeah, it's like, uh, he's just like your typical bro, but not bro. He's like just very chill. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. I love that for you. Yeah. yeah. So today's session was... uh, it sucked talking about emotions and that's not fun. Right. No one wakes up in the morning wanting to feel emotions. Right. That's funny. That's so funny. Um, I treated myself to a facial today. I get monthly facials at Maison Glow. Shout out to Maison Glow, St. Pete South Tampa. Yeah. Um, but it's funny. The owner, Amy, She, I get my facial and then she's like my little therapy session. So I talked to her and that's what I did today. I chatted with her and she gives me life advice. And now I feel like I'm ready to take on the world. Hell yeah. Uh, 
I think the key is I need to talk to my shrink every day and you need to get a facial every day. And yes. then literally whenever we record this podcast, we'll be this upbeat and this excited. Uh, are there other people there when you're getting your facial? Um, okay, so there's the esthetician. There's usually someone at the front desk. And then if there's other clients, now, but... What's the tone that you're talking to your person at? Are you announcing all your problems with oh, yeah. men? Oh, yeah, out loud. Hell yeah, you are! Yes. No, it's an open concept space. It's fantastic. If you haven't been, again, it's Maison Glow. Yeah. Definitely check them out. But, oh my God, Ryan, would you be down to, like, go with me? No. I go monthly. <laughs> Will you please come? Sure. Yes! We have so many dates planned. I love I make it. make these promises with people, and then, like, it's two days before, and I go, crap, I... <laughs> made that plan so that's one of those plans i'm cool with it now and let's say february 27th you'll, you'll be like today's the day to get a facial i'll be like oh woo, can't wait so yeah i'll i'll deal with that in a month do you usually cancel on people last minute how do you feel about last no minute? usually they'll remind me here's right. how i feel about last minute things so that i just interrupted you on accident uh i will be reminded two days of. They'll be like, like I'm going to the sneaker soiree tonight yeah. in Tampa. And I thought it was Saturday. And then Pat Donovan, the guy uh, from Pat and Aaron that I work with in the morning, Pat's like, oh, so you excited for the sneaker soiree on oh Friday? Gosh, and I was, like, I was like, it's Friday, not Saturday? And he's like, yeah, dude. And I'm like, I'm executive producer. I should probably know this. I'm just saying that to me. you get a plus one? Because I want to go to the sneaker soiree badly. Oh, uh, why? This is like a sports convention. It's like what I live for before I got into radio. You want to be an agent? I wanted to. Not an agent. You would be a sassy agent. I don't know. The what? worst players would get the worst money because you would just keep <laughs> bitching and bitching. And then finally the rich CEO would be like, fine. Shut up. I'll pay them. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to get it. I was working for sports teams in Tampa Bay. That was my route. And so if you get a plus one, sneak me in. Okay? That's all I'm saying. I, I could barely get in. It was a little controversial amongst... <sighs> Who could go? Well, here's what happened. We're in a group text of about 18 people. Everybody that works at 95.3 WDAE. And my boss said, I have six uh, passes to uh -oh. the soiree. Who wants them? And first come, first serve. Send your emoji now. J and Z from the Midday Show, 12 to 3, responded. Uh, I think Ronnie and T-Crash were already invited. But everybody responded. But Aaron uh, oh. didn't respond. Uh, oh. So a few of the producers are going, and he should be going. Right. But I'm not going to say my, I don't even have an opinion about how my boss went about it because that's how he wanted to go about it. But it's been kind of awkward because Aaron's like, oh, you're going to the sneakers where I'm like, yeah, oh, I just texted the group. It's nice that you didn't have to like give your ticket up for like not a high, yeah, like a higher offer. I told him I was willing to because that's how dedicated I am wow. as an executive producer. Said, Aaron Jacobson, I will do it for you, bro. Right, or we could just find a ticket for Aaron and me, and we can all go. That sounds like better. I mean, More Aaron is position. single, and uh, you are single, is and you're he? both the same Why age. Why is it that I come on this show every day? We talk, mm, yeah. every podcast. We I want to show you a picture it. of Aaron. He's Please a single do. man. Why you handsome, like, makes good money. You should hook me up with your single friends. You don't really do that. You should do that. Oh, because you totally do it for me. You have so many beautiful friends, and you They're totally not single. They're not single. What about the beautiful girl you went to the lightning game with? She is on the market. I don't want to force it. But, okay, uh, but we're we'll going to do it. Okay, uh, let's see. So uh, Ryan showed so me a picture So this is of, him, as he likes to say, pre-nose job. That's Aaron. He's 32 years old. That's oh. him, as he likes to say, pre-nose job. Aaron, when are we getting married? <gasps> he's I'm cute. playing this for him. Yeah, and he makes good money, and he's well-trained. Like, he is an old soul. But is he... How does he treat women? What do you know? What's the dirt in the office about him? Let's go there. Uh, there's yeah. really no Should dirt. Should we talk off air about that? There's, okay. there's he, no dirt. Ryan winked. Sorry, Aaron. Do you so know, we'll talk off air. Do you know who Jack Harris or Ted Webb is? Mm, Ted Webb. Why does that sound familiar? Okay. 90 or uh, it was WFLA back mm -hmm. in the day. It was uh, AM Tampa Bay. It was the morning show from like 1980 till about uh, 2018 when Ted Webb retired. And then Ted Webb passed away two years ago. 
and it was like Aaron's mentor. So he's very similar to Ted Webb and currently Jack Harris, who used to be the voice of the airport. And you've seen him in those hearing aid commercials. Yeah. Hi, this is Jack Harris. I love Jack. I met him. He's super Aww. cool. I love that you know so much history. So for those- How do you not know who Jack Harris is? But it's not just that. Like, you have books on the radio. You are so passionate about... You literally know every DJ, every host for every show in every county, every but state that's fair, ever existed. Jack I love Harris it. Jack Harris and Ted Webb are like Coca-Cola and Pepsi of this. Like, oh. it's not like I'm saying some obscure name. Okay. Like, they had the biggest show. Wow. Like, they went viral before they went viral because... I believe Ted Webb got into an argument with one of the Reagan brothers in like 92 and it went worldwide. So they were like viral in that building. Like they were like boomer viral in the early 90s. And Jack does a great job uh, with uh, Dana and uh, Berlander, 5 to 7 a.m. on 970 WFLA. <sighs> what do you got going on this weekend? What are you up to? Okay. Well, I am car shopping. Uh, that sounds fun and cheap. Yeah, I uh, sold my car before I moved to Spain last year, and now that I'm back, I got to find a car. So that's what I'll be doing. I'm going to be looking for a vehicle. If any of you guys, actually, I think Courtney, Courtney Brown that was on the show. Courtney, I'm going to come see you. Courtney uh, Brown, a former NFL player, was on our show a few, uh, maybe a couple months ago now, but he is a salesman, uh, a car salesman. Maybe I should go check him out. Maybe I should go see him. But yeah, I need to find a car. Other than that, uh, laying low, you know, doing what I do. All you do is lay low. Uh, yeah. I, I, that's, I think that's the mother in you. Is it? Yeah, it is. You're like unboringly just boring so the thing is this like sunday is always the day that's like i hate sunday get prepped for you know my kids get groceries so i can make lunch for monday you know get the kids in bed at an early time friday and saturday i'm not big into going out so i am trying to branch out more you gotta branch out yeah i'm trying i'm trying Baby and you're steps. doing a good job the fact I that you're am. trying you're doing enough you've been seeing me like that is Hell new yeah. alessia baby steps ryan I feel like i'm looking at 2017 alessia i'm like She's alive. I thought you were dead for the last six years, but you're here. I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I feel this last week has been mentally so much better for me. Um, Really? This this week was just draining as hell. Yeah. I mean, Uh, it has its moments, right? What went on with you? What are you Just a lot of work, a lot of radio things, a lot of just overthinking, uh, deleting the dating apps. Oh, just all of those big moves. Oh. We deleted the dating apps. What was- Not because I'm even grumpy. I was getting a lot of matches. I don't even feel a connection to myself right now. No. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes. Ryan. Oh, my God. Ryan. So the, how the hell am I supposed to fact, do it again if I can't even feel myself? I don't even hate yes. myself. I don't no, myself. Right. No, this is exactly why I'm not dating. This is exactly why we need to connect with ourselves. I think that therapy session served you well yeah. because you are, you're in touch with your emotions right now. You got to do you. You got to connect with Ryan yeah. and you have goals and you're effing doing it. And I got to be humble, but keep not, not keep. Let's let's do a, a rewind. Take two. I gotta not talk myself down. No, I talk myself down so much that my dick goes inside my body. <laughs> it's smaller than small dick energy. It's like not Stop. even. It's like little needle. Well, you're doing it now, and we're not doing that. But you no. and I both have said this to each other. We're like we're too hard on ourselves. We're too hard on ourselves, and we need to be like, damn, we're fucking awesome. Yeah. And if you're listening, you but gotta not look. annoyingly. No, but you gotta look in the mirror every morning. You gotta take a couple breaths. Like this morning, normally I like jump out of bed. I check my phone. I do the things. I laid there. I looked at the ceiling, and I'm like, "You are a badass, and you're amazing. And you deserve and it. And you are just gonna have a great day. And you're gonna, you know, you're gonna, um, you know, inspire other people. You're gonna do the best you can to help others today." And you're going to be a kick-ass mom, and you're going to be positive, and that's what you're going to do. Why is it that when you talk out loud to yourself, you say positive things, but in your brain, it's just, you're the worst. You're going to go nowhere in life. No one's going to ever love you. You're going to die alone, which is true. But you ever know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's wiring. Like, it's how we have programmed ourselves. And we, it, first of all, kudos to us for noticing. If you notice you do that, you're one step ahead of everybody else. And you need to get over it. And we need to work on talking 
positively to ourselves in our brain. The biggest, the biggest downfall of our lives is just negative self-talk. If you can control the negative self-talk, which is the hardest thing we all suffer with because it's internal and we don't Mm -hmm. see that the other people are suffering, but everybody goes through this. If we can control the negative self-talk, we're going to be golden because the (laughs) truth is when you're in your center and when you're at peace with life, things flow. And we know this. If you've ever experienced that and then you're in a hard place, you know that it's attainable. You know, you can get back there. You just have to believe it. If you believe it, you can, you can do it. It will come to you. Yeah. Uh, what's it like inside of Alessia's brain? Okay. So this month it's been anxious, anxiety, and now, (laughs) and now this week it's turning, it's turning a note. It's getting positive. I feel back. I feel like I'm getting back in control. What if you just got blackout drunk this weekend and just went wild? (laughs) I, oh, I don't know. You should just get so drunk that you just wake up on your front lawn and your kids are like, mom, are you okay? Oh my gosh. Um, (laughs) I couldn't. I that sounds miserable. I don't want to deal with kidding. the hangover. I don't want to deal with like I'm afraid to drink. I love drinking because I'm an alcoholic. Oh, it's great. It runs to my family. But my God, the hangovers? Ugh. No. And your mouth. Gets you dry. say things yeah. when you're drunk that you wouldn't even say to your cat. When you're drunk, <laughs> the honest truth that's not even honest. What does Luna hear from you? Luna's Orion's cat. What does she hear from you when you're drunk? Do you talk sweet nothings into her ear? Do you no, I'm just like blaring music, just hanging out. She's probably heard the same a thousand songs over and over. Oh, man. What are the go-to songs? Uh, off the grid, 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 grid by Con. Yay West, uh, Sexy Girl Anthem. I wish I could play fucking music on here because the copyright would be fun then. Not but yet. I can't. My daughter, her uh, her music choice in the morning is, I have to sing it because I don't even know the name of the song, but it might just be the title. Okay. Yeah. Um, shake, 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 senora. Shake your body, right? But the Pitbull version? Yeah. And so she gets down to that in the morning to get pumped up. I feel like there was like a two-year span in 2013 to 2015 that we were really trying to hate on Pitbull for just no apparent reason. Yeah. And now we appreciate Pitbull. I love Pitbull. I've always loved Pitbull. But anywho. No, but there's this thing that... I'm trying to load it up. Here we, here we go. Mm-hmm. You ready for the? Mo- it took me a second to load this up. You know the millennial Bible verse. It's this. What is? This for everybody going through tough times. Believe me, been there, done that. But every. But every day, uh, every day above every ground. Every day, if I was above Can I, That was kind of there, but you get what I'm doing. I know my rent was done about a week ago. Let's see if I got this. This for everybody going through tough times. Believe me, been there, done that. But every day I'm... This for everybody... I guess that is the dumbest TikTok sound ever. Why wouldn't you finish it? The most important part about being alive. Right. I know my rent was... Oh, this is Gen Z and we don't want to address death until we have the worst midlife crisis of any generation. Why would you leave that part out? Right. I worked my ass off. And I still can't pay it, though. Right. We've I, been there. We've when been I was there. 21 years old, I thought that was a joke. And now I'm almost 30. And I'm like, fuck! Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour. We'll be right back. So I'm growing out my hair, just hanging out. But I'm going to get a haircut next Thursday. I know. February 2nd, I think, is the day. I hope so. February 2nd is National You Should Get Your Haircut Day. I just made that up. I love that. Rich Keeley is the best barber around. Just go there. No, you, you got to sign up at richkbarber.com. But once you go there, tell them I sent you. Happy hour. Happy hour. RyanHoppyRadio.com. It's time to turn Hoppy on. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY. Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Can you believe it's been 40 minutes? Really? I'm kidding. It's been 19. I'm like, oh, what? <laughs> I wanted to do that to you. 
Um, Only 19 minutes. You always say that like it's a bad thing. <sighs> Just Are going you bored for bored talking to me? No. <laughs> uh, there is somebody that I could promise you is very bored. I did a little road trip this weekend. <laughs> With my nanny. Todd Chrisley gets a family reunion behind bars. This is a- that had to be humbling. Todd Chrisley is used to having his boyfriend. Wait, he doesn't have a boyfriend. Yeah, he does. Uh, at the house and everyone's hanging out at the mansion. And then, hi, dad, you're behind bars. <laughs> Close family and they're obviously going to spend time visiting with one another. E.T. confirms daughter Lindsay and his mother, Nanny Faye, visited the reality star just over a week after he and wife Julie surrendered to prison. Todd served. She's also, uh, sources say she's a spoiled brat with no redeeming skills. Kind of like me, kind of like you, all millennials. We weren't taught anything. Were we? I have a lot of skills. Oh, oh, oh you do now. Yeah. You're so talented. I'm very handy with tools. Okay. Serving out a 12-year sentence for bank fraud and tax evasion. You're going to be 44 when he gets out. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow. I'm going to be 41 just hanging out. It just was not the best week for me. The emotions associated with all of decade. that and my parents and my siblings and my grandmother. What we want. She's acting like it's just going to be a year. Like, you know how some people got a year in prison, like Martha and that, and whatever. 11 years like it's gonna be a hard more than a I, decade i lit- i mentally mm. no i i could not i could not be in prison yeah me, me neither i wouldn't really I, mean, I, don't know, I don't know what person's like yeah i could do it but like truly if you sat and thought about it yeah could you mentally how long would you last i would not i would not last uh, a week six hours i li- i couldn't i could not do it yeah, it doesn't really seem fun. No. Not do is we will not break. Opening up on her The Southern Tea podcast, Lindsay says she and Nanny Faye took a drive over the weekend. I ended up taking a road trip with Nanny and we only got two hours away because she was convinced that she was going to do like all of this driving. And if you've ever ridden with someone who's elderly who like probably shouldn't have their license, there's nothing more nerve wracking and you just truly just want to take the wheel. Yeah, Nanny Faye's driving abilities were featured plenty on Chrisley Knows Best. Hey, what you doing? I see you. And my eyes is on you too. They should be on the road. Bye. Did you see that? She just flipped me off. So when we stopped for our first meal, I got behind the wheel and was like, that's it. Lindsay says she's also ready to leave 2022 in the rear view mirror. I think we all are. 2022 wasn't really the it wasn't even a bad year it was just another it was just another year like the rest of them you know what's weird is i i need to stop doing this but last year was sorry i did not mean to meet you i meant to mute me go on what did you do last year Uh, last year was actually so good for me i got to do so much traveling with my kids i know i sound like an annoying person talking about this but i traveled so much with my children that I keep thinking about our travels and I miss it. And so coming into this year, I'm like, where are we going to go? Man, last year I was living the dream, traveling through Europe. We went to Morocco. I went to Jordan. I went to France, Italy a couple times, all throughout Spain. And now I'm like, damn, I'm back to reality here in the United States. 856-49. Happy. It's 856-494-6773. What the hell is going on in the news, Alessia? We have a few things, uh, something kind of ironic. So in the news, it says that Conor McGregor uh, reportedly accused of attacking a woman on a yacht in Ibiza. What a surprise. Yeah. So um, the site reports that Conor McGregor has been named in an incident in which he allegedly struck a woman multiple times and threatened to drown her during a party to celebrate his birthday, which took place the weekend of July 15th. Okay, this happened a while ago. The woman then jumped off the yacht to escape. I would too. Also, no no offense. Why are you on a yacht with Conor McGregor? You gotta leave. He's a sociopath, bro. She probably was like super pumped to like be invited to a party or maybe just like snuck in. Yeah. But oddly enough, a couple days ago, um, Conor McGregor was hit while riding his bicycle. So he was struck. I think that's karma. Playing its card. 
karma seems to be real, but there's sometimes that bad people just get away with things. So I'm indifferent about karma. That's true. That's true. But I've heard she gives good lap dances. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Hey, Hank, That's sure. actually really funny. Go on. So what else? Yeah. So he was hit by a car while he was on his bike. He said he could have been dead. He got banged up pretty bad. The pictures online show that his rear end was tore. His pants were ripped open and he chased down the driver who I allegedly did not see him. I wonder if it was plotted. Like, I wonder if it was Let like... The driver, like, knew what was... Good. Let me see your phone real quick. Okay, let's look. So there's his bike. It's all banged He's up. He's probably an annoying biker, too. You know the bikers? <laughs> you know how they have their unnecessary lane they don't deserve? And they literally ride to the left, like, all the way. Like, they're pushing it. It's a power thing. I, I don't want to say I hate bikers, but I'm not the biggest fan of bikers. Yeah, I, I could see that. They kind of seem like douchebags. They kind of seem like their favorite day would be Tuesday. And I'll see them then. See you next. I, I, I you lost this, me. It's, it's a joke about the C word. Oh, okay. <laughs> see you next Tuesday. <laughs> see you next Tuesday. That's funny. Wow. You are full of jokes today. Thank are, you. Therapy helps. That are going right over my head and yeah. that make me feel like, what is going on? I Th have no that's, idea. But that's my brain. You're experiencing what it's like to be me. That's why I can't wait to be dead. I don't have to think about it anymore. Uh, Alessia. Yes. What do you think of bikers? I love biking myself. My family is actually big into cycling mm -hmm. uh we do like an annual bike race together every year down at Fort Soto. so i think they're cool but i could see your point that there's like probably different personalities and some that take it way too seriously and like will take up the whole road and like let the cars behind them just pile up and like not move out of the way and you know what's funny when they're wearing that like outfit that shows off their skinny body i just know they're going home to make avocado toast and watch the office like you're just a boring caucasian human being are you so my grandpa so my family came from italy my grandfather came from italy because he didn't own a car you know he had he got around on his bicycle so that's yeah. how our family got into biking like his father my great-grandfather was a bicyclist my grandfather was an av even into his 80s was like biking 26 miles a day so the last time i did a race with my grandfather we were side by side on our bikes this must be at least six seven years ago now but we were biking a 26 mile uh bike race and my grandfather in his 80s was like can you please go faster like can we go faster and like cut like past the people in front of us yeah and i was like i'm really trying my best and i can't so my grandpa i couldn't keep up that that's what was happening i'm not out of shape people I'm just saying he was that good. You got mom body. Like, but uh, mom body is not as bad as dad bod, but mom body is sexy as hell. I cannot believe you just said I had mom body. In a good, you look like a mom, but you look really good. I like look anybody like a would mom. be lucky to have you as a girlfriend. I'm putting that disclaimer out there. I'm just saying. What does a mom body look like? Be careful with your words right now, Ryan Hoppy. It looks is like it, you like, have had a kid before. Like you're a little like, oh my God. like you look thicker, but it, not you particularly, but like the mom looks thicker in the legs and it's just better. There's more meat on the bones. Okay. For the record, for those who can't see me, I do have thick legs. So Ryan is talking about me. So it's like a little I'm bit talking more, about like, is it more, it's like squishier. Well, yeah, he gives you something to grab. All right, guys. For the, yeah, I'm not as toned <laughs> as all the moms. I am a little squishier, and I guess that's what a dad bought. Any like, mom that I've gone on a date or have made sweet love to, all were like thicker. Like if you're a skinny mom, then you had to kid at like 18 and have kept your body perfect. Some women just keep that. Just have good genes, and even if you're a thicker mom, you still have great genes. And you know what? We're it's just all better different. to not have the perfect body because the people with perfect 
electric bodies have you, no personality. You are calling me out right now. You Why said I'm thick and squishy and I... That's a compliment. <laughs> Guys like thick and squishy. I don't... You tell me that 20-year-olds want to hang out with you? Who? No, You've no. You've said before. No, they don't. On no. dating apps and that. No. Trust me, 20-year-olds want to hang out with you. No. You could get a 23-year-old muscular Gen Z just yeah. muscles. Gross. No. Why is that gross? I I told you I think that's too young. For I, I want to date somebody who like I leave their number. I'm on a receipt. You're hooking me up with Aaron. I need to look no further. Uh, it's that, already happening. That would be weird. <laughs> I can't believe you haven't introduced me to him already. <sighs> sure. Yeah. I just hope you guys get married then, because then it'll be weird if all of a sudden <laughs> things aren't good and my two projects in my life, well, it's more of a job for that, and this is a job too, but I'm just saying, you, yeah, don't be a sociopath. Okay. Women can really be, I, I know, I know men, <laughs> listen, li- li- listen, listen, it goes both ways. But listen, I know, listen, Linda. I know, I know men can be sociopaths, but I think men are more psychopaths because they're more violent. No, you're already putting negativity out there for our I'm, relationship. I'm not, what's I'm not, about, wait, what's Aaron's I'm, I'm last not name? Jacobson. So I'm, I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to be Mrs. Jacobson. Oh my God. Ah! Yeah. That's what's happening. Wow. What if it did happen? He's going to love my squishy thick mom bod. Oh, he will. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, don't be a sociopath. Women can really be sociopaths and it's just tiring. Yeah. Men are narcissists. Yes. All of us. Confirm. We're all just hanging out here doing a good job, you know. Ryan, tell me something I don't know today. It sure looks like they're a thing. Selena and Drew were spotted holding hands over the weekend in New York. Not the great Drew Garabo. He's in a relationship, I think. By the way, I was listening the other day to Drew Garabo. Sounds good, man. It- I, sp- I spoke to him in DM two months ago. I have nothing but adoration for Drew Gras. I think he's great. You know what I'm saying? Okay. No, I'm just saying, I. what are you leaving me hanging for? I'm talking about an old co worker that I have a lot of respect for. <laughs> I'm listening. I said, okay, yes. What kind of reaction? You're really you contributing to the conversation. I'm so sorry. I'll, you know what? I'll go back to doing the show for an hour that had no listen through. I just talked to news clips. <laughs> it sure looks like they're a thing. Selena and Drew were spotted holding hands over the weekend in New York. This is the guy from the I chain thought smokers. She was talk- oh, yes, that's right. Okay, so they're still, <laughs> they're still doing their thing. But it's not the first time they've been seen together. As matchmaker and dating expert Devin Simone explains, I'm sure this woman, Devin Simone, it's not because she's a woman, but I'm sure she's the worst to date. Anybody that's a dating coach? Like, do you know uh, Mel Robbins? No. She's like this inspirational. She's like, I wonder if she's married to Tony Robbins. She has she's not. dark hair. She's blonde. And she's like. I wonder if she is married to Tony Robbins. She's then. not. She's like in her 50s. And she's like a motivational speaker. And I heard her on. She's good with relationships. Uh, and just life in general, uh, she was. Uh, do you know Jay Shetty? I other, live for she Jay was, Shetty. I, I'm. I, they're good, but you know they would be such douchebags to hang out with you that think? it kind of ruins the appeal a little bit. Like I like what they do. Like I David like that Goggins. You think of that. I like, like that. You, you just know they'd be just pretentious and be like, "How much money do you make?" But I like what they say. But what I'm saying is Mel Robbins is an American lawyer who does motivational uh, speeches. And she said mm. that um, she's very unhappy with her life. I could see that. Yeah. It's a comedian thing. She's married to Chris Robbins, not Tony Robbins. I had to just check. Interesting. Uh, I could see that. I could see that a lot of people that get into their profession, such as psychologists, therapists, motivational speakers, end up needing to take their advice. It's a comedian. They're, it's like the inspirational searching. comedian. Yeah. I've interviewed over 50 comedians and have spent a lot of time with comedians. I have a question. They are some of the most insincere, smarmy, fake 
Mm-hmm. You could literally get a Ken doll. No, actually, I don't you know the about you, you know the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum. Yes, those wax figures have more of a personality and are more genuine than comedians. I don't know. I've hung out with comedians before. Ugh. I did an event. Uh, it was I'm sorry. A, it was a uh, comedy show for charity. Um, oh, well. And they seemed cool, but my question is, so you said hanging out with Jay Shetty would probably be like, meh, even though I think he, it would be cool. It would be cool, but I don't think he'd be fun. I, I just don't think he'd be nice. Do you, uh, Do you? but for yeah. you, yeah. if you, this is like that high school question that you have to write a, a thesis on, but Tell me. if you ha- could have dinner or go out for Kava or Kiva or whatever you call it with anybody... <laughs> Who would it be? Uh, I don't know. Come on. Who would it I've be? I've met my heroes. I've met some of my favorite radio shows, and they're all just... just <laughs> I don't know. Come on. You Barack to- Obama. Yeah. Okay. What would what would you ask him if you guys hung out? Like, what would it just be shooting the shit? Do you have a specific question you'd be like... Oh, no. I would just talk to him. Not really... Barack Obama. I am shocked that that was your person. I could pick Michelle. She would be dope oh, to hang God. out. With. No, Ugh. she's cool. I like her. Oh, she's great. Uh, here's a little bit of Mel Robbins. Your life is going to get a lot easier when you stop forcing other people to have the same heart, expectations, values, and objectives that you have. Woo, preach, girl. Preach. <laughs> this is the life lesson and, I've been learning this last week. And at, once you let go, Ryan, yeah. the freedom you feel... Oh, yeah. Is just unbelievable. Look at her face. She, she, she looks like someone that's really taking her own advice. <laughs> Stop. You're terrible. <laughs> when you give people the space to be who they are. Like my husband that I just am afraid of divorce. Not easy to do. But when you can give people the space to be who they are. You, you go to that wing of the mansion. I'll never see you. And let go of your expectations yeah. of who you wish they would be. Oh my God! Boy, Woo. Does life get easier? Preach, <laughs> preach, Ryan. You didn't even know this. You didn't even know this. And what, what you did I just, not know? you what you literally just played, yeah. is, is what I've been learning this last ten years of my life, and have been resisting this lesson. But it has finally hit me, people. It has finally uh, hit me. You're a mother. You're a you're a teacher. It is time for Alessia 101. Mm-hmm. Tell me the wisdom and the wide thoughts that come from Alessia Calandra. Ooh, I'm just gonna echo what she said. Okay. So okay, but say it in an Alessia way. Don't make it seem like you're doing a Cliff Notes version of her. Okay, do something original. All right, I have been de- listen. There has been a pattern in my life that I have been repeating for the last decade. When I say decade, I literally mean the last ten years of my life. I have been in a cycle of this pattern where I have tried to control something. I have tried to get someone to see my point of view, the same person. I have tried to get them to feel the way I do about certain things. And me holding on to that control never got me where I thought I would want to be. It was finally this Literally, people, after a decade, this last week of my life, releasing control. Because up until now, I was resisting hard, hard. And I kept thinking I could change the person, and I couldn't. Sometimes you got to just never talk to them again. A hundred. Correspond via email. It's been great. It's been the most, <laughs> it's been the most freeing thing that I've done for myself if you have no this atta- last week. If you have no attachments, it's painful because you just sometimes get the urge to look, but you don't. But blocking somebody forever oh, and ever. Yeah. It's kind of not douchey. It's sad when it has to be done. Here's like, you're not happy doing it, yeah. but my God, it's freeing. Here's what else I'll say. What? This is not how I wanted it to be. Yeah. I was hoping, listen, everybody has a choice in life. And when you're working with someone, a partner, an ex, a co-parent, you, you want, I wanted it to be a positive, right? Because <laughs> children are involved in my situation. And that's what I'm talking about here again. But 
I wanted it to be a positive, but you cannot control the other person. You have to stay in your lane. You can only control yourself. And the sooner you get that through your head, as hard as it is, y'all, as hard as it is, the freer you will be to just get shit done yourself, rely on yourself, depend on yourself, and create a stable home for yourself and your children. Now, there are some women that are going, man, that sounds like me. What are some examples of you trying to control? Okay. My heart. So like we just listened to this clip and she says, you know, the heart and the value you have, you want other people to experience it too. My life is my children, but I can't force someone to feel the way I feel about my kids. I can't force someone to love and devote their time to my children the way I do. And I was trying to do that. I was trying to force someone to love them and devote their time to them the way I thought that they should. I was expecting this person to act the way I thought they should be acting as a parent, as a partner, as all the things in life. And you cannot do that. We are not here to control others. People reveal their cards to us and it's up to us to take them as we may and either discard them or hold on to them. But the thing is I held on for 10 years in this cycle and it drove me to depression. It drove me to anxiety. It told it. <laughs> Ryan always cuts me <laughs> off. Anyways, not worth it. He has something to say. Go, go Ryan. I thought the uh, thing was on mute. I was going to play that for something later. You were having a real moment. And I, really I know. <laughs> Any, if you're listening to I'm this, though, we all go through shit. We all have our patterns. We all have our toxic habits. Listen, give yourself some credit. Stop beating yourself up. Look at yourself in the, in the mirror and tell yourself you're a bad bitch. If you're a guy, <gasps> tell yourself you're the shit because you are. Okay? We are done we are done diminishing ourselves. We're done lowering our standards. We're done playing by their rules. We don't have to. We can stay in our lane and get shit done ourselves. Okay? All right. Stop expecting people to change. They are not going to. We are going to move on to the news that we almost all died. I feel like singing, though. Oh, no. It's the meteor. Now, this is a story yeah. a little farther away from Earth about an asteroid getting yes. close. Yo, Some good close, news. <laughs> close. Savannah Hoda, good morning. Good morning to you as well. NASA calling it a, quote, very close encounter for Earth. An asteroid about the size of a delivery truck passes within 2,200 miles of the Earth's surface. This happened last night. 2,200 miles? That's like, if you're in Tampa, Florida, that's like here to Alaska. That is so scary. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm surprised like the energy of like the meteor flying by didn't, I don't know, didn't affect the earth. I in think any- something like that's going to happen 100%, in our lifetime. 100%. We're going to be like 80 though. I, <laughs> like, I sorry, Jen A. <laughs> I heard that at some point. So yeah. apparently they're also testing the core of the earth and saying that the center of the earth, which is a solid metal rock, is starting to spin in the opposite direction. Well, when that happens, shit's going to change. The tides, it can affect the ocean. It can affect the tectonic plates under the Earth's surface. And that can cause massive earthquakes. It can cause volcanoes all worldwide to erupt. And I have this theory, which I don't think I'm the first one to think this. I read it and I believe it. Trust me, you're not. (laughs) That all of the volcanoes will erupt at the same time, causing a massive cloud that surrounds the earth, blocking out sunlight, killing our crops, and therefore we cannot eat and eventually we die. It could happen. (sighs) We just got really dark on the show. Yeah. Damn. Speaking of someone that needs to really be careful. Involved in another accident, the former late night. Uh, I didn't begin from the beginning. It's it's uh, Jay Leno. Jay Leno has been involved in another accident. The former late night host has broken his collarbone, two ribs, and cracked both of his kneecaps in a motorcycle accident. He revealed in an interview with the Las Vegas Review Journal, the latest. Oh, that's a huge publication. Everybody wants to be interviewed by the Las Vegas. What? Motorcycle accident. 
He revealed in an interview with the Las Vegas Review Journal. The oh, that's a big time interview. Yeah, but you know what's funny is he probably <laughs> like after his injury was on like painkillers and his publicist and PR team came in and was like, hey, Jay, like while he's lying in the hospital bed. Yeah. Hey, uh, Jay, you know, the Las Vegas Review Journal wanted to. And he's like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Like, and that's probably how that happened. Hey, uh, They're just, like, he approved it. And he's like, just make sure that they don't bring up how I totally copied everything David Letterman did and just did it cornier. This incident comes less than two months after the 72-year-old comedian suffered burns to his face and neck when a steam engine exploded in his face while working on a vintage car. When Jay was asked about how he was doing following his burn accident, he revealed that earlier this month, he had another incident telling the outlet, that was the first accident, okay? Yeah. Then just last week, I got knocked off my motorcycle. So I've got a broken collarbone. I've got two broken ribs. I've got two cracked kneecaps. But I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm working. I'm working this weekend. Yeah, you're working a little too much, bruh. Oh, my God. Two cracked kneecaps. <laughs> Ow. I'm going to be paralyzed. But hey, I didn't copy David Letterman. Ouch. Jay told the publication that he was testing a 1940 Indian motorcycle and noticed the smell. Yeah, the thing's almost 100 years old. Let me test out a machine from literally a century ago, just about. Hey, let's get on a horse and carriage that was built in 1910. Well, Why don't we? when he had the show Jay's Garage. That's kind of his whole thing. That's what I'm saying is like this to him, test driving something like this is what he does for leisure time. This is his passion. This he is his interest. He makes money too off of it in, oh, in whatever way. I don't doubt it. He probably makes Smell money. of leaking gas. Sharing details about the accident. So I turned down a side street and cut through a parking lot. And I feel like it's when you turn down the side road. It's like there's bumps in the road and hookers. Pop Unbeknownst holes. to me, some guy had a wire strung across the parking lot, but with no flag hanging from it. So, you know, I didn't see it until it was too late. It just clotheslines me and boom, knocked me off the bike. The bike kept going and you know how that works out. Jay Part of me wonders if his vision's maybe not the best, coordination, everything's not the best because he's 72 years old. I'm kind of wondering if maybe, I know he doesn't want to like quit doing it because then it means that he's old, but my God, bro. I'm scared to be old. I don't care anymore. Jay didn't publicly reveal this accident until now due to the amount of media coverage he received from his November hospitalization and recovery. At yeah, I can imagine he's like, hey, let's not talk about this. I want everybody to keep talking about me. You know, after getting burned up, you get that one for free. After that, you're Harrison Ford crashing airplanes. You just want to keep your head down. The Jay Oh, yeah, it sounds like Jay Leno throwing someone else under the bus and then not claiming any responsibility. He is such an asswipe. Oh, he just seems like such a tool. You said this last week. I know. I know. You have those that feeling about him. He just is like, why bring Harrison Ford into this? Like, you obviously aren't good at what you're doing, so you're blaming everybody else. Kind of like that time he hung out in the closet and was in an NBC meeting. Do you know about that? I don't. Tell they me. They were having a meeting about him potentially getting David Letterman's job or something. And he or, hung out in a closet? And he was like, they were in like one of those like typical 1990s, 1980s boardrooms where all the executives would be. And they were talking about something with him and Letterman. And he was hiding in the closet. And I don't know if they heard breathing or whatever, but they're like, Jay, come out of the closet. Are you kidding? Yeah, it's an alleged rumor that he was hanging out in the closet. Like, That's so like a awkward. Literal <laughs> that is so awkward. And then that whole thing. Like, I, I like this show because, like, for some reason in the Midwest, he did really well. I don't know what it is that we're lowbrow and dumb, but we just really liked him. And he did well in, like, Kansas City and Chicago and all those Midwest cities. Hmm. Yeah. Well. I think it's because he was L.A., so it was, like, access to the actors. Mm -hmm. While the Midwest cities, like Kansas City, St. Louis, all of them, all of those cities, they don't like New York. Like, they're jealous in New York. So I feel like if you're watching Letterman or whatever, you're like, oh, that's the New Yorker. There's a really unhealthy thing, specifically Chicago, where they're like, we're better than New York. No, it's a thing. I just can't think about the midwest because it sounds really boring it's like <laughs> tell nothing, me about it probably like no, nothing to do out i there. grew up there oh i'm so sorry for you it's whatever i lived a good life i'm saying as if i did <laughs> uh -huh. 
Speaking of someone that's going to die soon. King Charles officially removes his younger brother, Prince Andrew, from Buckingham Palace. Oh, man. I think... Took nine months of the pedophilic allegations to have been out to finally get rid of your brother. <laughs> you know, the royal family, well, they cut Andrew off from public duties. They airbrushed him out of royal life. What are his duties? Walking around while people take pictures of him? Oh, yeah, but going to Pedophile Island took forever to get rid of him. Yeah, I cannot believe it took so long. I don't... The thing is, the investigation was being done. They had proven what that he went there. He had correspondence with that woman. I, 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 I'm I, being... It was sarcasm. Oh, yeah. So why did it take so long? Did they have to do their own royal investigation? You know what creeps me out? Everything? Is, about people with money at that level? It's... You can literally do a Facebook Live anywhere, but the Jizwell... Whatever her dumb name is, yeah, I love Max, saying her wrong. Justine Maxwell. Justine. Is it Justine? <laughs> Justine. No, it's that's <laughs> we we just both butchered her I, name. I did it purposely. Jizz yeah. on her pants, Maxwell. Uh she uh all her appearances in court. Mm-hmm. Jizz on my face, Maxwell. All her uh, appearances in court were all hand drawn. Why is every other court case Derek Chauvin? Oh, just Derek- Lane, just Lane, just Lane Maxwell. She's in my hand, Maxwell. She's probably they. This is what I think about certain people. But do you see what I'm saying? It's like they're protecting something. Oh my god! Well, first of all, he apparently died in prison, which yeah. I think was a total setup, Duh. so that he wouldn't be tried and be put on the stand because shit would come up about a lot of royal, presidential, higher ups people with power around the world donald trump and they took him out and they claimed that he uh you know that epstein committed suicide in prison highly doubt it they either threatened the shit out of him and he committed suicide <laughs> or they killed him and blamed it on suicide have you ever seen ray, but that was ray the donovan biggest red f- i mean come on have you ever seen ray donovan no but everything you ask if i know the person or if i've seen it it's a no like am i the worst at everything you know no, you're just a mom with two kids. Okay. So you have no free time. Tell me about Ray Donovan. The show with Lee Shriver, Lee Shriver, he uh, plays a Hollywood fixer that fixes everyone's problems. And it's uh, it's like a Soprano show. It was on Showtime. Yeah. And uh, in the show, there's a lot of uh, implications that a lot of things that happen to famous celebrities get protected. Here, I'll show you a of picture. Of course. I mean, that so, makes sense. Uh, there was definitely uh, a Ray Donovan. Look, so... That's Ray Donovan. Look, that's Ray Donovan. Hold on. Ray Donovan is this handsome guy that fixes all of Hollywood's problems and cheats on his wife. And uh, that's his sidekick that helps him cover things up. Let me see if I can get a picture of the whole is cast. Is this like a real show? Is yeah, it, uh, it's a like fictional reality? show. Oh, it's, it's a fictional, fictional show, okay. but it's it's based off of uh, just kind of what it's like in Hollywood. Uh, let me see here. That's, here here's that's the his, thing. Here's that's the his thing. dad who... Committed murder, was in prison for 25 years. Oh, my God. That's his half-brother. That's his brother with Parkinson's. That's his brother, allegedly, with Asperger's. And that's his wife that he cheats on. So that it, it's, a, it's, a, it's one of my favorite shows. But now I look at some of these, like, like overdoses. Yeah. And you're like... There's certain... So I... Well, give me an example. Okay. Uh, dang, I'm blanking on the show. It was a show about a woman who did like the undercover, like underground betting for all the celebrities and made all of this money, um, basically creating this social club for like the elite to be a part of and like gamble and all this stuff. And like, that's a, like, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, but there's a different level. People have sicknesses and mental illnesses and very, very strange fetishes and, and things whether they have money or they don't have money. But when you're at the level where you have that type of problem and you have money and you're elite and you're somebody in the world that the world recognizes, it just becomes a whole other ball game of things that happen in the movies that we think are just fictional, but are actually real life. And I think that's what happened here. I feel like the Me Too movement really brought it to light. No, I don't think that was it. I feel like this has been going on. Do you think it was the Me Too movement that spiked that? Really? Because we found out that everybody was a creep. Yeah. Speaking of someone that I don't want to see as a creep, but definitely has had a sketchy life. Didn't make me happy. <laughs> Ass. 
not ass, but just salt on the wound. Not necessary. Pamela Anderson not backing down from her disapproval of Hulu's Pam and Tommy, which chronicles her and Tommy Lee's sex tape scandal. Have you seen it? I haven't, but Pamela Anderson's been hot in the news because she just came out with her memoir. She's annoying. Go we away. We know last week she called out uh, Tim Allen for claiming that he unveiled himself and uh, and basically uh, streaked. I feel like she's had an awful life. <sighs> I don't know. She does support her brother, which is nice. He just sells memorabilia of her and she like fully supports his life. Isn't she an annoying PETA person too? Like just insufferable. I know though, recently in the news, Sylvester Stallone has been mentioned in her book. Why? And supposedly. So Did they hook up? He offered her a condo in a Porsche to be his side woman he said. Hell she, yeah. She declined, but man, this book is calling no. out. No, why be the side chick to one of the most handsome actors when you can make a sex tape with white trash? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> On a boat. <laughs> oh, you have such principles. Get out of here. I think it's more about connection. I don't know. But Pamela is really unveiling all of the people she's calling out in this memoir. <gasps> so far, again, we have Sylvester Stallone and Tim Allen. And I want to know who else is going to be featured in this book. What the hell is this? One thing. So she's mad about the Pam and Tommy show? Uh, no, she, is she? Oh, she's going to get into it in this she said she approved it. No. Okay, let's hear it. Come on. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. With the Pam and Tommy show? Yes. If it bothers you, it's probably a little truthful. Because if it, if nothing's accurate, you go, it's not true. Whatever. I don't know. Lily James has been praised for her remarkable transformation into Pamela in the critically acclaimed series. Pamela tells Variety, quote, I wonder what it's like being in a, I wonder what it's like for Pam Anderson that the greatest acting and the most unique riveting thing was a show that's fictional about your life. Who's ever gone, oh, I'm a fan of Pamela Anderson? Just Everybody. Saying. Literally every every man. She was, she was the 90s. Oh, I've got nothing against Lily James. I think that she's a beautiful girl, and she was just doing the job. Uh. Anyway, it happened. I've never seen the series, and I've never seen um, too much of it, but it just looked like another Halloween costume to me. Did oh, so not, if... So she, did she not what? approve this? Because, like... You have to approve it before someone uses your name I haven't and face seen it yet, so how do you know? Does a story on your life. Well, it sounded like that in the interview that she just said. She hasn't. Know. So if you haven't seen it, how are you going to judge it? Yeah, but. Watch it. I wonder what her rights are, like her contract when it comes to. Doesn't sound like much. Well, truly, like I wonder what her contract is as far as people using her name, using her face, using her story. Like, if she gave up the rights to that or something happened and then she's unhappy, because it seems like she did not approve this. <laughs> it seems like she, whereas when they did that Versace. Uh, Versace, remember, Versace, the, Versace, Versace, the Versace, Versace. Mer the murder of Versace. You remember that song? Donatella um, approved it. Yes, I know. Versace, Versace, yes, Versace, Versace, I know Versace. that song. <laughs> Donatella Versace had to approve it. And, you know, they had a whole extensive talk with her beforehand and she had her hand in how it was directed and produced. Whereas, I don't know, Pamela seems in the dark about this. Yeah. Ugh. And also Pam Now Pam's reclaiming her narrative with her Netflix documentary, Pamela, A Love Story, as well as her book, Love Pamela. The writing process was so intense, she had a physical reaction to telling her story as she explained to Howard Stern. I started writing my book and I put on like 25 pounds. Crazy. I am... Um, oh my God, how fat. What? No, I, Lost could, it all. I could see that. And the thing is, it's so emotional. Like if she really sat down and she was like, okay, I'm going to do this. First of all, if anybody journals, you know how that one journal entry can be super emotional and like freeing and all the things in like writing in your diary once. Yeah. She sat down to write a memoir of her life. That is reflection. That's emotion. That's traumas that I she did. is sorting through. I Holy crap. 25 pounds. I would have put it on in a second. I would have put it on in a second. And also, guys are she was the 90s, Ryan, because everyone, everyone had that barbed wire arm tattoo. I've released to it. Oh, my God, Ryan. <laughs> Play the clip. I don't care anymore. Uh, Gen Z and millennials are turning to flip phones for mental health. Uh, that sounds great. Oh, my dad care. told me that yesterday. He's like, that's a great idea. Does your dad watch Good Morning America? Of course. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, I thought, how do you feel about a flip phone? If they brought back Snake, no. I'd be down. I love uh, that Just game. have self-control and like put the phone in the other room. Don't be a baby. We have one minute left. Yeah, All right. Any, any final words or anything? <sighs> I hope All everybody right. has a great Gasparilla weekend out in Tampa Bay. Be safe. Make sure you plan your ride home. Don't drink and drive. Don't boat and drive. Yeah. And have fun. Catch some beats for me. <sighs> Finally. Are you going to Gasparilla? Oh, so- uh, no, I don't. The transportation is just it's 50 bucks hard. an Uber. No, thank you. I'd rather hang out with this deadbeat dad. Abby De La Rosa is having some fun with her family. The 32-year-old took to Instagram on Wednesday to share some sweet snaps with her kiddos having some playtime at a park. Abby shares 19-month-old twins Zion and Zillion as well as 10-week-old daughter beautiful Zeppelin with Nick Cannon. Nick has a large family. Yeah, he does. Oh, my God. I'm sure right before he went to the park, he probably just finished inside of, like, nine different women. I could, I, if there's, he and Nick Cannon is up there with Andrew Tate for me. Oh, totally. I just, I don't even want to go there with Nick Cannon. He's just gross. He and Alyssa Scott share newborn daughter, Halo Marie. They also share son, Zinn, who passed away at just five months old after battling brain. Well, that was sad. Oh, that's sad. Uh, That's really terrible. Yeah. Um. Okay, we're supposed to end on a high note. What the hell, Ryan? Yeah, I, I really dropped the ball on that. Damn I, it. I just, I, Damn it. You try so hard, and you really put in a lot of effort. And in the end, it's not that it didn't go your way, but it was unpredictable, Alessia. Mm-hmm. It just is unbelievable what happens. Have a great weekend, everyone. <laughs> I, I didn't know that was going to be brought <laughs> up on this show. I didn't know that's where it was going. I know. That's what happens when you don't prepare, Ryan. I didn't pre- Just kidding, guys. Happy hour. Happy hour. Money. And like that, he's gone. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Over.